Hi there, everybody. Welcome to the next Chem Complete lecture. And in today's lesson, we're going to take a brief look at something known as the McLafferty rearrangement. So the McLafferty rearrangement is a common occurrence when you have aldehydes and ketones with a specific structure. So that's what we want to take a look at today. The McLafferty rearrangement is going to be a fragmentation pattern that will occur specifically when an aldehyde or a ketone has a hydrocarbon, which means a carbon with at least one hydrogen on it, three atoms away from the carbonyl location. So let's just generally remind ourselves first that a ketone is going to be a carbonyl group surrounded by two other general hydrocarbon groups on each side which we can use R to represent the rest of the molecule. An aldehyde would be similar, but on one side of the carbonyl, we have just a hydrogen. So both ketones and aldehydes can undergo the McLafferty rearrangement, provided that one of these sides contains at three spaces or three atoms away from the carbonyl, a hydrocarbon. So let's take a look at how this gets set up and the actual pattern and cleavage that occurs and what's going to result at the end, which will be a neutral alkene fragment along with a charged cation enol fragment. So an enol is a mixture of an alkene and an alcohol together. So let's draw the initial structure and then take a look at how the rearrangement may occur. So we'll work with a ketone for this example. And let's just keep it generally simple. We'll say CH3, CH2, CH2. So that's three atoms away. And this carbon right here is going to have hydrogens on it. So that'll work. And then we will bring about the carbonyl group. And then we'll just finish it off with an R group here, uh, whatever we want for the other side of the ketone. Now, when we get ready to take a look at the way this actually occurs, I'm going to draw it a little bit different with uh, some bond angles that will help us understand what's going on here. Okay, so here's the CH3 that's over on the terminal end to the left. Okay, so we're going to explicitly draw out the hydrogens. Okay, this is attached to a CH2, and then that CH2 is attached to yet another CH2. And then that is bound up to the carbonyl. Okay, so you can see that I'm kind of arching it so that we have uh, proximity between the third position and the carbonyl right here. And that's going to be important if we want to show what's happening here, uh, mechanistically speaking. Okay, and then we also have the R group. So let's take a look at what's going to occur here. Well, first of all, the hydrogen is going to associate itself with the carbonyl oxygen. So keep in mind that this is partially negative. This would have a very slight partial positive, not to the same extent if this were to be uh, a hydrogen attached to something like a nitrogen or an oxygen, but enough that we can get this coupling to go on here. So you're going to end up with a movement of the hydrogen to the oxygen here, and it's actually the bond so these electrons need to come with it because it's going to form a new bond here okay and then we are going to move down the electrons involved in the carbonyl and that becomes the alkene portion of the enol and then we will also break apart this carbon carbon bond to form the neutral enol that's going to occur over here so let's break this down with a little bit of color to help us understand so I want you to focus on this chunk right here. This is going to be the neutral alkene portion that will result. So we will end up with a fragment that looks like this. It's going to be an alkene that does not have any uh, positive charge associated with it. Because remember, when we're dealing with mass spec, we're talking about m to z ratio, where z is the charge. And usually we're dealing with a plus, right? So these. Uh, compounds they come like this and they have a positive charge after they've been ionized and the electrons been removed so 
the alkene will be a neutral uh, fragment that cleaves off. And then you're also going to have your enol. So the enol, let's highlight that portion in a different color here. And we'll show that. So that's going to include everything here. This hydrogen is now associated with the oxygen. And we'll have something like this. So the enol is going to have the following. You've got the left side. And that's where the carbon-carbon bond cleavage occurred. Then you have the actual alcohol portion. And you've got the R group right here. Okay, so this will be the charged fragment that comes off and is associated with an actual signal that you're going to see on the mass spec, that enol signal right there. Okay, so this is, again, known as the McLafferty rearrangement, and it requires the biggest key here in order to get this to go off successfully is that you have to have the hydrocarbon group that is three spaces away from the carbonyl in order to kick off this McLafferty rearrangement process. Okay, and if you're interested, because maybe you're in a class or you just would like to learn more, if you head over to chemcomplete.com at our website and you go over to our guides, I have a full comprehensive guide that doesn't just look at mass spec, but it also looks at tying mass spec into IR, NMR, both C13 and H1, and solving for unknown structures when you're coupling all of these together. So this is very common. A lot of undergraduates experience this in their organic chemistry classes. So if you're struggling with spectroscopy, I would encourage you to head on over to chemcomplete.com and check that out. It's an excellent way to support the channel. So speaking of support, we're all done. If you leave a like and this was helpful, that always supports the channel. Other than that, subscribe. You'll be up to date at all times when we release content. And if you leave any comments, I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Have a great rest of the day, everybody.